Well, this is a wonderful film, and the overfishing in the tuna industry, but does that extend to every part of the fisheries right across the globe? Well, I, I think that... Uh, I think there's something about 75% of uh, global stocks are experiencing some uh, element of overfishing. So it's, you know, we at the moment are fishing right through the food chain, you know, from the, the largest predators in the sea, from the swordfish, uh, bluefin tuna. Uh, we fished an uh, enormous amount of the middle-sized fish, like cod and halibut, halibut yeah. and hake and those sort of things. And we're now fishing things like krill, Antarctic krill. They're these incredible boats that... Uh, that fish 24 hours a day, seven days a week, with a, a hoover that's sucking krill yeah. out of yeah. the, you know, out of the sea, and uh, they have to prepare it very carefully because the krill explode or something on, 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 on in contact with the oxygen. So, we are fishing. There's, there, there's a, there was a scientific paper that um, uh, Daniel Pauly brought out, which is called "Fishing Down the Food Web." But I don't think we're fishing down the food web. You know, man starts with the biggest fish and, and works his way down, or starts with the whales and then goes on to the tuna and then goes on to the cod and then goes to the, for the sardines and then the krill. But I think at the moment we're fishing down, you know, across, up, you know, um, yeah. through, you know, we're fishing the entire food chain at the moment. And, uh, you know, when you, when you deplete species beyond a certain point, when you deplete the d species beyond 90%, um, you know, m in, in many cases there's no turning back and those stocks yeah. collapse and that has a, a massive ecosystem impact. So that, 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 that stock has an impact, on, the collapse of that stock has an impact on others. But there's one marvellous example of how it could be done if it was extended to all the oceans in the world. Uh, thank God the Icelanders won the Cod War with the United Kingdom because now it's totally protected and ranched. Uh, and they have a really efficient fishery with an inspector on every single yeah. trawler. Yeah. And uh, uh, it, it works perfectly if the, if the fish are, uh, coming aboard are too small. That whole area is shut off. That's where the cod have decided to, yeah. to breed. That's their, that's their new nursery. Yeah. And that's why um, all flights all night long coming into Heathrow with full size, perfectly healthy yeah. cod. It's sustainable forever and ever. Yeah. That's why yeah. we can still get fish and chips in the UK. Yeah. The only the only thing I'd say to that is I don't eat cod. And I, and it, if you, there's a moral question as to whether you can. Well, if you look at globally, cod <laughs> stocks, the cod po the cod yeah. as a as a species globally is still very 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 low. As it has been de 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 depleted to what, 95 percent off uh, off uh, uh, the Grand Banks in Canada. The North Sea was 90 yeah. is 90 percent. So globally, the species is down. There are pockets of well-managed stocks, but I personally don't eat. Or I'm, I'm not really comfortable with eating cod from any from any stock personally. But I think what you what you what you, I mean, there are areas where people are doing the right thing, yes. and it, and it, it just shows that. Uh, it, I mean, essentially, the problem is one of management. The, the fact that you know fisheries managers and fisheries scientists and politicians have mismanaged uh, a common resource and and. You know, if you put in place the right regulations, if you limit the amount of fishing boats you have there, if you put in closed areas or marine protected areas, yeah. and you don't have uh, uh, gear that that, uh, that causes a lot of bycatch, then you know, uh, and you adhere to the scientific, the correct scientific predictions, as, uh, uh, you know, um, that are telling you how much to catch, then you can turn it around. You can isn't, change it. Isn't the real point that? The age of the hunter-gatherer. I mean, they're the last hunter-gatherers in the sea. That's yes. absolutely over now. Yes. And every inch of the oceans should be owned by somebody who then take care of it and look after their small yeah. fish, raise them properly. I mean, I think that the zone should be extended everywhere in the world, so that say the Atlantic, um, it meet in the middle. Whatever country borders the sea would own that. I yes. think they have some good experience with that along the Chilean coastline where they have divided parts of the sea to villages and the village uh, yeah. is re responsible and, and I think that's working yeah. very well. Well, yeah. funnily enough, it's the Japanese who first did that in the Middle Ages. They, uh, they had a section of sea was owned by each village and if somebody was poaching on it, they were killed. So <laughs> that was really looked after. But then the Japanese, um, unfortunately, are taking fish stocks from everybody else across the world. Yeah. Their coastline is wonderfully managed. Yeah, I think I think you uh, yeah hit, hit the nail on the head. It's a it's a it's a, a question of ownership, and I think that um, at the moment 
the 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 fishermen don't feel that, that they they wholly own the resource or they're in control of the resource they don't have any rights over the resource and and many of them are uh, engaged in a race to fish against other fishermen Absolutely. who also don't have rights or don't feel feel the full tragedy of the commons except the yes. tragedy of the tragedy of the commons so it's about taking ownership and i think that i think that we the you know the citizens of the world i mean the in the united nations uh, law of the sea the opening sentence is the oceans, the oceans are the common heritage of all mankind. So we all need to take ownership of, of this problem of the oceans, and you know, and try to and, and, and try to understand where our fish is coming from and the impact our purchasing deci decisions are having. I saw that really vividly on working on a trawler, um, because the, the skipper would be in radio contact with the, sort of the Spanish Spanish fleet yes. coming up, um, and we all know they had substandard. I mean, they're little tiny. Nets, um, and we're fishing everything out. And he would be uh, actually saying to me, "Well, what's the point? What's the point of leaving this particular stock intact? Because it, it, they're right behind me now. They, yeah. They're one and a half days away." Yeah. Um, and exactly. then he'd, he'd pretend it was sort of cat and mouse. He'd, he'd sink his nets down into a canyon he knew was there, and then they'd Spanish would bring and say. Uh, have you got anything? Well, how, how are you doing? And he'd say, absolutely nothing. She's, she's better today. <laughs> um, crazy, crazy competition. Yeah. No, no, no motivation for anybody to save anything. Yeah. I think uh, uh, the common fisheries policy, which determines how you know, European fishermen uh, uh, have to operate, is, has been a catastrophic failure. Yes. You know, I think there's 30% of... of uh, of European species are outside safe biological limits. 80% of them are overfished. You know, the European eel, although this is not purely overfishing, has declined by 90. Uh, we were at a meeting. We were at a meeting with the EU ministers to decide the fate of the bluefin tuna, and we were the only journalists there. You know, the, the, the people are not paying attention to these catastrophic declines, and. Uh, we, we spoke to an official and he said, we said, what else is being discussed at this meeting? And he said, oh, European eel. And we found out the European eel had declined by 99% in the last 30 years. Wow. And, and we weren't even covering that story. And so, you know, a lot of this has happened without people noticing it. Noticing it. And I, I think that's what we wanted to do with the film, is to bring it to people's attention and say, look, this is happening and it's really important. And it affects everyone, it affects all of us. And we need to do something about it. What, what do you think of the Arctic? Because now it's opening up and the, ah, the yes. ice decline is Very will be a new, new fishing ground. Do you have yes. any suggestions how we should deal? We with should that protect area? it. It should be a, it should, it should, it should, it should be a, a marine protected area, a no a no take zone. Yeah. It should be a no take zone immediately because you have virgin uh, ground, so, you know, ocean yeah. ground which has never been bottom trawled before. Yeah. And bottom trawling is the, the, the most destructive activity. Um, fishing activity there is because not only does it collect every every living thing on the uh, you know, every swimming thing uh, near the bottom, but it wipes it wipes out you know ancient ten thousand year old corals and the, the whole substrate and habitat, uh, and it's uh, you know um, uh, it's hugely destructive. And the Arctic is revealing a, a ground that has never been trawled before, and that needs to be protected. And people are starting to think do that. The United States recently protected or had a moratorium which means a temporary closure until they till the science is in in the Beaufort Sea in uh, in in Alaska and northern Canada but Canada is disputing it so it's it's a fascinating issue because it's where two massive problems the two biggest problems facing humanity climate change and overfishing intersect in the arctic and a lot of the fish are moving as you were telling me about your work you're seeing uh, 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 species moving north yeah. So not only so the, the ice re it retreats, the species move north. Fishermen move north. Fishermen yeah. move north. Yeah. You know, there's going to be a, an awful lot of action in the yeah. in the Arctic, and we need to put in place the legislation to protect it now. Fast. Anything you yeah. can, can think of is, is is always open to cheating. So that's probably the biggest problem to deal with. There's always someone behind the horizon who wants to beat the system. Yes. Who wants to ignore well, the scientists. But, but, who wants but, but, to turn but, everything upside down. This, this question of ownership, um, you know, when you, when you have a, a rights-based based system, so you have a, a group of fishermen who own, a yeah. each one owns a percentage of, I mean, it's a complicated thing, as far as I can understand, each fisherman owns a percentage of the catch. And as the, as the biomass, as the amount of fish grows, so does the percentage of their catch. 
And so it's within their interest to keep other people out and to keep overfishing down. Uh, it's in their financial interest. And so uh, when you have a system like that, you don't have cheating. No, but on the other hand, if you have a system like that and the catch is referring to one species only, then this, this management might be focused on that one species yeah. and destroying the rest because they, oh yeah. they, they, they yeah. don't care then about you the shrimp the if, you're, if you're... Sorry. Um, bycatch is, 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 is big and it depends what kind of fish you're, species you're, you're after. I mean, prawns, it's something like 30% um, of what they catch goes back over the side dead, although that is being reduced. I think people are... I think bycatch has been a massive issue. It's becoming... You know, people are trying to address it. The European Union is trying to address it. Um, I just think that overall, fishing Industrial fishing is a hugely wasteful activity, and um, uh, the amount of actual protein that ends up on your plate, yeah. compared with the, with the the tonnage that was actually caught or killed yeah. at sea, is minuscule, and that needs to change. <laughs>